Celebrate your events in style with a professional flyer design. We all see flyers in our everyday lives. From casual parties to corporate events, flyers simply let us know what's happening and where. And every designer can benefit from learning how to design a flyer using a few essential tips and tricks in Adobe Photoshop. Hey everyone, my name is Melody Nieves for Envato Tets Plus, and this is how to make a flyer. As a digital artist and instructor, I can attest to how important it is to try something new. And in this course, we'll learn how to tackle two professional flyer designs featuring completely different styles. First, we'll cover the basics, learning the standard guidelines, sizes, and print setup for most flyers. Then we'll tackle the designs, starting with a summary, music festival-inspired flyer with cool retro 90s details. After that, we'll step back in time with this vintage Art Deco theme. Inspired by the thousands of amazing design templates on Envato Elements, this course will show you how to make the most out of your subscription by bringing incredible design resources together. No prior expertise is necessary since we will be letting our stocks, patterns, and even Photoshop actions do all the hard work. So, ready to get started? Me too. Let's begin with the next lesson. Hello everyone and welcome back to this course. Let's kick things off by getting to know more about standard flyer designs and the formats you'll need to achieve these results. For the purpose of this course, I'll be creating flyers based on what you would normally see with the premium templates on Envato Elements. These templates have been specifically designed to give you print-ready files that can be used right away. So what should a standard flyer template include? Start by creating a flyer at the appropriate size. Open Adobe Photoshop and go to File, New. Notice how Photoshop already comes with several amazing presets you can use for print designs. Here are a few standard industry sizes that are commonly used around the world. Depending on your needs, you can choose a print that is tall vertically or horizontally. For both flyers, I'll be using this A4 preset, which I'll then customize even further in the next steps. Flyers can come in other sizes too. Squares, trifold brochures, and other shapes or printing methods are not uncommon templates. But I would recommend working closely with your printer first to determine which route you should take. So let's customize this A4 template. Originally, the width and height of the template appears in millimeters. Depending on your preferences, you can change this unit of measurement to one you're more familiar with. I'll switch it to inches. This changes the size to 8.2 by 11.6 inches. And many of the preset settings you see here don't need to be changed. We'll keep the portrait orientation, for example, and we'll also need a high resolution of 300 DPI to make sure our design is of great quality. The only other setting I'll change is the color mode. Change the color mode to CMYK. CMYK is the official color model for professional printing. While computers, cameras, and other tech display their colors in RGB mode, CMYK has a much more limited reference of colors because our designs will be printed using four color press machines. CMYK stands for cyan, magenta, yellow, and K for black. Feel free to dive into these topics even further for a refresher in standard printing. Next, let's create a new document and begin customizing the template with bleed lines. Professional printing is not a perfect process. Therefore, you'll need to know how much room to give your core design elements so that the printer knows where to cut the paper. I really believe in the power of repetition. So for this course, we'll create the bleed lines or crop marks ourselves, then repeat the process for each flyer design. Let's create the crop marks. Create a new layer. Hold Ctrl R to view the ruler's option. You can create guides for your crop marks by dragging guides directly out from the rulers. But since we need guides that are a little more exact, we'll place them using specific numbers. To get these numbers, find out how much bleed you'll need. The standard bleed I'll be using is 1 8 or 0.125 inches, but feel free to customize it to your printer's specs. For the first two guidelines, we'll need them at 0.125 inches from the edges of the paper, both vertically and horizontally. Then subtract 1 8 from the width and height of the paper to get the remaining values. To place a new guide, go to View, New Guide. Create a vertical guideline at a position of 0.125 inches. Then go to View, New Guide again, and now create another vertical guideline at 8.143 inches. Repeat the process for the remaining guides. 
Go to View, New Guide, and switch the orientation to Horizontal for a Horizontal Guide. Position the first one at 0.125 inches. Then go back again and position the second guide at 11.568 inches. You can create the crop marks or bleed lines in the style you like. Lines, borders, and crosshairs are often used for the same thing. Select the rectangular marquee tool and make a selection in the upper left corner. Pan over to the other corners and continue selecting them by holding the Shift key. With all corners selected, right-click and select Stroke. Create a black stroke of two pixels, then deselect the selection. Here are the final crop marks. Keep this layer at the top of the Layers panel and color code it to separate it from the rest. You can also lock the layer for more security. With time, the process will get easier as you remember the rhythm and purpose of these steps. Now that we know more about our settings, let's see how we should organize our file. Join me in the next lesson, where we'll talk a little more about file organization. Hello everyone, and welcome back to How to Make a Flyer. My name is Melody Nieves, and for our next lesson of this course, we'll go over some important tips for dealing with file organization. Professional flyer templates, like the ones you'd see on Envato Elements, are specifically made with the appropriate guidelines and settings for professional printing. This means that once you're ready to print, your template is ready to go for a seamless transition. This also means that there are a few important details to look out for when preparing your file. First, you'll need a layer dedicated to bleed lines. These special guidelines allow printers to know where to trim during the printing process. To make this layer stand out, feel free to color code this layer a different color. For the purpose of this course, both templates feature bleed lines color-coded with the color red. I've also grouped and labeled the layers for more organization. Not only will this help keep everything neat and tidy, but it'll also help you understand the order to which these layers must appear to create the final results. Feel free to continue color-coding these layers accordingly. We'll also need additional settings to pull off these looks. So adjustment layers, layer blend modes, and layer masks all become important factors in the design and organization of these flyers. Layer masks help us edit non-destructively by masking out elements we don't want to appear visible. While adjustment layers and layer blend modes help us finely tune the colors with various settings. Monitoring your overall file organization will make you one step closer to being a well-rounded designer. Now that we have an idea of what to expect, Let's dive into the first flyer design. So join me in the next lesson of this course, where we'll create a summary music festival inspired flyer. Hello everyone and welcome back to How to Make a Flyer. Now that we've covered the essentials of print design and file organization, we can move on to getting more familiar with our first project. Let's go through a brief overview of our design assets as well as what to expect as you make the first flyer, our music festival inspired design. Since this flyer is inspired by summer, I've used several beach assets to build a scene using photo compositing or photo manipulation techniques. All of the images, 3D objects, and fonts you see here are all available on Envato Elements, so you'll have full access to them for easier downloads using your Envato Elements subscription. Let's take a look at our selection to see what we've got. The first picture is a summery beach scene with palm trees, sand, and the beautiful glistening water in the background. I'll pair this picture with one of my favorite tools, a 3D object like this beach ball from Envato Elements. Now, in order to use these 3D objects, you'll need to download the object as a PNG or PSD file at the specific angle you need. So as you discover these assets on your own, make sure you hit View 360 Render first, then position the 3D object at the best angle for the composition. It may take a few tries to get the hang of it, but luckily, that's why we have unlimited downloads. So once you're happy with how it looks, download the angle, preferably as a PNG file, so that the background remains transparent. These 3D objects will help reinforce the 90s theme we have going on, since design in the 90s was heavily based on colorful, geometric shapes. Our model also becomes a huge component of this composition. Here we have a picture of a simple model stock, styled with pigtail buns, which are also commonly known as space buns. If you followed any of my courses before, then you know how much I enjoy playing with body language, style, and the general attitude of a composition. So for this photo, I've picked a model with a fun, flirty pose and big heart glasses we can use to add even more red colors into the design. Photoshop actions will also play a huge role for this flyer. 
A Photoshop action is a series of recorded steps that helps you create many design possibilities. So if you don't feel super strong in typography, for instance, feel free to use a Photoshop action like this 3D text creator for better headlines and titles. Since music festivals are a lot more laid back, I've gone with a few casual fonts to match the style. This forever summer font duo pack contains a beautiful marker style that gives your letters that handcrafted feel. Additional fonts like Beavis and Century Gothic will then help us balance out the textures we've created for a much cleaner and more legible result. I've specifically made this course to show you how easy it is to create professional flyer designs once you have access to incredible design assets like the ones we've chosen. Additional shapes and effects are created with the help of Photoshop, so be sure to stay tuned to see how the design unfolds. Check out the process in the next lesson, where we'll create this summary, music festival-inspired flyer. Hello everyone and welcome back to this course. So far, we've learned some of the basic guidelines of standard flyer designs as well as a quick overview of our first creation. Now let's jump into creating this cool music festival flyer with a fun retro 90s feel. Get started by opening a new document in Adobe Photoshop with a standard A4 size. First, I'll switch over to inches for the unit of measurement. Then I'll set the color mode to CMYK color to make it the appropriate format for printing. One of the many benefits of presets is that everything is mostly filled out to what you already need. So with this in mind, I'm happy with my other settings for resolution and orientation and will go ahead and create this new document. Once your new document is open, it's important to make sure your workspace is set up appropriately to help facilitate this flyer design. A few things that will help us during this process are guidelines for the crop marks or bleed lines, smart guides, and having access to the rulers option. To reveal the rulers on your screen, hold Ctrl R. At any point during this course, if you find the rulers too distracting, just use the same keystrokes, Ctrl R, to hide the rulers away. Next, we'll show the smart guides. They can help you see the distance displayed between paths and figure out the spacing between objects. To enable this option, go to View, Show, Smart Guides, making sure there's a check mark next to it. Create a new layer in the Layers panel. Then go to View, New Guide. We'll be creating four vertical and horizontal bleed lines using the same numbers we created earlier. First, create a vertical guideline at a position of 0.125 inches. Then go to View, New Guide again, and now create another vertical guideline at 8.143 inches. Repeat the process for the remaining guides. Go to View, New Guide, and switch the orientation to horizontal for a horizontal guide. Position the first horizontal one at 0.125 inches. Then go back again and position the second horizontal guide at 11.568 inches. Now that we have all four guidelines, we need to create physical crop marks so that the printer knows where to trim. Select the Zoom tool and zoom into the upper left corner. Grab the Rectangular Marquee tool and create a rectangular selection in the upper left corner. Continue selecting the other corners of your document by holding the Shift key as you select the other three. Once all the corners are selected, right-click and choose Stroke. Add a black stroke of two pixels before hitting OK. Then deselect the selections. Pretty simple, right? Organize this layer by keeping it at the top of the Layers panel. Rename it Crop Marks and feel free to add a color to the layer to distinguish it from the rest. I'll go with red. Now let's move on to creating the beach background. To build our own sunny beach scene from scratch, we'll be using simple photo compositing techniques. First, create a new group named Background. Then add a new layer. Open the Tropical Beach photo and hold Ctrl A to select the image. Now copy and paste it onto the layer you just created. Resize it for a smaller fit by holding Ctrl T to free transform. Since I only want the left side of the sand and palm trees showing, I'll position the image like so. Next, let's add the 3D beach ball. First, make sure you've already downloaded all the angles you'll need for these 3D objects. Then open the 3D beach ball, hold Ctrl A to select it, and copy and paste it onto a new layer above the beach image. Select the Move tool and use the arrow keys on your keyboard to position the ball in the right spot. I'll be using this technique consistently to finely tune the position of each object, then name the layer Beach Ball. For a little more depth of field, let's blur the ball. With the layer selected, go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, adding a radius of 8 pixels. Now select the Rectangle tool, set the fill to None, and the Stroke to White. 
Create a rectangle with a stroke of 10 pixels that will act as a border around all our elements. Then set the layer blend mode to soft light. Let's add more shapes into the mix. Create a new group named Shapes. I'll generally be organizing this file by section and not necessarily the layer type. So just keep that in mind for easy organization. Select the ellipse tool and create a large circle with a blue fill and no stroke. This isn't the final color yet, so it'll just be a placeholder for now. Position the circle right above the sand. Then set the layer blend mode to linear burn. Let's add the image of our model next. Use the rectangular marquee tool to make a quick selection of the model, then copy and paste it onto a new layer above the circle. Lower the opacity so that you can see the blue circle behind it. The circle will act as a background for the model instead of the original pink color. To remove this bright pink completely, here's a little trick. First, add a layer mask to the model. Then set your foreground and background colors to black and white and use a hard round brush with 100% opacity to paint black onto the layer mask. See how it starts to remove the pink background like an eraser? Working around the circle gets a little tricky, so let's make it easier. Select the ellipse layer and right-click to rasterize the layer. Now use the magic wand tool to select the circle. Right-click to select the inverse. Once the selection is inversed, we can remove the background pretty easily. Just select the model's layer mask again to mask away the rest of the pink background entirely. Take your time with this step. It will require you to work around the pigtail hairstyle so zoom into those sections and lower the size of the brush to mask away these stubborn crevices. Continue this process for the pink areas within a circle. Here's the result so far. Great work. Let's spice up the flyer with a few retro 90s elements. The 90s was all about abstract shapes and bright colors, so we'll use the custom shape tool to add more in. Select the custom shape tool and go to the options from the drop-down menu. Select the all option, then Append to make sure the tool loads with all the shape presets currently available in Photoshop. Then choose this shape that looks like waves. Set the fill to white and the stroke to none. Just like before, we can use the Move tool to position each new object precisely where we want it using the up, down, and left and right arrow keys. Continue the process with more shapes. Use the Custom Shape tool to create a circle frame with the same white fill. Hold Ctrl J to duplicate this layer and position a much smaller version of this circle on the opposite side of the model. The next shape we need is a triangular frame. Use the custom shape tool to add this shape, then flip it by going to Edit, Transform, Flip Vertical. Position it below the smaller circular frame. Before we move on to adding more shapes, it's important that we start working on color adjustments. Create a new group named Adjustments. Then add a new adjustment layer of gradient map. Set it to linear gradient with the following blue and red colors. Then set the layer blend mode to lighten and the opacity to 60%. Add a second gradient map adjustment layer above the previous one. Make a white to salmon colored linear gradient before setting the blend mode to color burn. Harmonize these colors by changing the circle's hue. Select the ellipse layer, then use the magic wand tool to click on the circle. Switch to the Paint Bucket tool and fill the circle with a bright turquoise color. Add a new adjustment layer of curves to the adjustment group. Adjust the curves of the CMYK, cyan, magenta, and yellow channels as shown to bring cooler tones back into the composition. Next, create a new layer and fill it with a bright green color using the Paint Bucket tool. Set the layer to saturation and the opacity to 30%. For a little more texture, let's add some diagonal lines to the background. Select the layer for the beach background and right-click to go to Blending Options. Create a pattern overlay with its diagonal pattern preset, setting the opacity to 28%, the scale to 350%, and the blend mode to divide. Now create another new group for more text and shapes. Copy and paste the silver torus onto a new layer in this group. Adjust the size with the Free Transform tool, and position it to the lower right side of the circle. Change the color by right-clicking the layer and going to Blending Options. Create a solid color overlay with this blue hue and set the blend mode to color. Next, copy and paste the red pyramid onto a new layer above the torus. With the layer selected, go to Edit, Transform, Flip Vertical. Resize the shape and plug it into the upper left areas near the palm trees. 
To make a slightly brighter red color, right-click and go to Blending Options, adding a red color overlay with the following settings. Now let's fill in the awkward spaces with more miscellaneous shapes. Select the Rectangle tool. Use it to create two new rectangles, one yellow and the other red, to match our current color scheme. These shapes may spill out into the bleed lines, but that's perfectly fine as long as you make them long enough. The last geometric shapes we need will function as areas where the text has to pop out from the background. Grab the ellipse tool and create a circle with the same blue as the center. Position it above the wave shape, making sure it still overlaps the main circle. Now select the custom shape tool and create a rounded rectangle. Position it towards the bottom in the center. With all our elements in place, we can now add the text. First, I'll create the text for the entry fee of $20. Select the text tool and set the font to Beebus, regular, with a size of 10 point. Write out the word ENTRY in all caps. Create a separate text layer for the $20 and this time, increase the size to 40 point. Finally, tune the position like so with the MOVE tool and arrow keys. Next, write out the official date. Switch the font to Century Gothic Bold with a size of 40 point. Then position it underneath the waves. With the same font as before, create a new text layer for the venue name, increasing the size to 48 point. Now plug in the address and time right below it in the rounded rectangle, this time lowering the size to 14 point. Then I'll quickly increase the font size to 15 point in order to include more text details like the website address and social media info. Now add the name of your special guest in Century Gothic font bolded with a size of 35 point. Change the color to the same light blue we've been using for more harmony. Then add the text with performances by at a size of 18 point. Position them both so that they're stacked on one another. The last time we'll be using the Century Gothic font is for the band name, The Girls. Set the color to white, the size to 24 point, and write the name in all caps. To make the band name stand out, Use the Rectangle tool to create a black rectangle around the name. Right-click the layer and go to Blending Options, adding a diagonal pattern overlay with the following settings. If you need to move multiple texts at a time, select all the layers and use the Move tool to push the text over with the arrow keys. Next, create blue text for the words Special Guest above the performance name in all capital letters. Set the font to Forever Summer Marker and the font size to 24 point. This is the same font we'll be using for the festival title. Write the word music at the top of the flyer at a size of 75 point. Position it in the center above the model. Then write the word festival at a slightly bigger size of 110 point. To make this title look even more unique, we'll add a quick 3D effect using this 3D text creator Photoshop action from Envato Elements. Once you've downloaded and installed the action, go to Window, Actions. With the festival layer selected, scroll down and hit this down shaded option before pressing play. Instantly, this action creates a 3D text effect you can easily adjust yourself. Great job so far, our music festival flyer is almost complete. Now it just needs a few more details to bring the best out of this style. I'll be applying additional glitch effects for this step on the model, the beach background, and the beach ball. Select the model layer and hold Ctrl J to create a duplicate. Then right click and select Blending Options, unchecking the magenta and yellow channels under Advanced Blending. Now select the Move tool and tap the right arrow key a few times to push the model copy over. Make this a pretty subtle effect to keep from distorting the model's face. Then we'll do the same for the beach background. Create a copy of the beach background layer. Right click and go to Blending Options this time, unchecking the K channel. Again, use the Move tool and arrow keys to move the background to the right side in a simple yet subtle way. Cool effect, right? We'll bring it all home by distorting the actual image. Grab the rectangular marquee tool and make a simple selection near the trees. Use the Move tool and arrow keys to move this piece just a little over to the left. Repeat this process a few times until you're happy with the result. It's a subtle effect, but well worth it in the end. Now make a copy of the beach ball and repeat this process. This time, copy and paste one of the selections onto its own layer before going to Filter, Distort, Wave. 
Click the randomize button a few times until it distorts the ball with a few bouncy waves. Because this piece is on a separate layer, you can continue to move it over until you find a spot that works best for you. Finish this flyer with a quick adjustment layer of color balance. Set the midtones to negative 26, negative 32, 16, then the highlights to 5, 0, and negative 93. I really hope you've enjoyed making this result. It's been a lot of fun so far working with different Envato Elements assets for a complete retro 90s vibe. Let's get started on the next flyer challenge, where we'll create an Art Deco inspired flyer in the next lessons. Hello everyone and welcome back to this course. So far we've completed our first flyer design. Now let's dive into our next project with a quick overview of the resources we'll be using as well as the general composition. Our second flyer is inspired by the wondrous Art Deco period of the 1920s. During this time, rectangular blocky forms were placed in stylish arrangements, then broken up by curvy elements for more ornamentation. As a result, the Art Deco style became known for its over-the-top stylized nature, which spilled into fashion, art, and architecture. So how will we use these elements in our next design? To embody this time period, we'll be using this set of amazing Islamic art vector patterns from Envato Elements. Although it's not originally inspired by the Art Deco era, a few of the patterns from this set will certainly blend well into the theme. For the final design, we'll be using the Islamic art pattern numbered 29. This pattern reminds me of the cool style of Art Deco architecture in particular. And by adjusting the line weight even further, we'll be able to achieve a sleek and sophisticated background inspired by this era. To sell this theme even further, let's explore the different fonts we'll be using. Since this flyer is especially made for birthday events, I've gone with a few decorative styles to match the celebratory theme. The main font we'll be using is Rolla Regular. An Art Deco font with tall geometric letters, this font will match the bold style of this time period. The next font we'll use is Bambi. This calm brush script features wide loops and a bouncy bass line. We'll only use it for one word, but the casual brush style has just enough creative flair to break up some of the rigid nature of geometric designs. To keep in line with our theme even more, let's incorporate another Art Deco font like this Grodna style. Inspired by the posters and signs found in the Art Deco capital of Eastern Europe, this font has been handcrafted for a clean and elegant result. Since it's a lot more subdued in tone than the other fonts, we'll be able to use it for our main event details, including the event time, date, and music features. One important note to keep in mind about this font is the special characters that appear for the letter O. The lowercase O has a line underneath it. While this does add to the overall style of the flyer, it's only achievable by making sure the letter is not capitalized. If it is, it will appear as a regular letter without the additional decoration. Now for the composition. For both flyers in this course, I've specifically developed a composition that is relatively similar. Many of the elements in the Art Deco design are centered just like the ones in the Music Festival flyer. The shapes are similar too. The large circular elements will help draw in our viewers while the rectangular sections house any important details for your special event. Now that we have a good idea of what to expect, let's move on to the design. So join me in the next lesson of this course where we'll create this fantastic Art Deco birthday flyer. Hello everyone and welcome back to this course. In this next lesson, we'll learn how to create an Art Deco inspired flyer using incredible premium fonts and design assets. Let's begin. Start with a new A4 size document in Adobe Photoshop. Again, I'll switch the unit of measurement to inches and the color mode to CMYK. Just like in our previous design, we'll need to set up the appropriate crop marks or bleed lines first for printer efficiency. Hold Ctrl R to access the rulers option. Then go to View, Show, making sure that the smart guides are selected so that they're all ready to go. Now we can create the guidelines for our bleeds. Remember our reference numbers from before? Let's use them again. Go to View, New Guide, and create a vertical guide at 0.125 inches. Then create another new vertical guide at 8.143 inches. Go to View, New Guide again, to create our first horizontal guide at 11.568 inches. Then finish the setup with the last horizontal guide at 0.125 inches. Remember to stroke these guidelines so you have physical markers for the bleed lines. Use the zoom tool to zoom in. 
Select the rectangular marquee tool and create the first rectangular selection in the upper left corner. Now pan over to the other sides to create more selections. Hold the shift key to add on to the selection we already created until all four corners are selected. To stroke them, right click and select stroke, adding a black stroke of two pixels. Deselect the crop marks when you're through and remember to rename and color code the layer. Let's begin this Art Deco design with a dark background. Create a new layer and use the paint bucket tool to fill the layer with black. Then place this layer into a new group named background. Traditional Art Deco styles use amazing linear patterns to create geometric compositions. So for the background, we'll be using this incredible pack of Islamic vector art patterns from Envato Elements. I've decided to go with pattern 29, which features a unique angular pattern that reminds me of Art Deco buildings. Let's plug it in. We can do so easily with the PNG version because of its transparent background. So hold Ctrl A to select the pattern, then copy and paste it onto a new layer above the background. Feel free to rename the layer before we add some color to it to help it stand out. For a beautiful gold effect, right click the layer and go to blending options. Create a gold color overlay using this bright orange color. Once you already have one effect applied, you can add more by double clicking the effects filter on the layers panel. Now add a thin black stroke with a size of three pixels to the pattern. Instantly, the pattern looks a lot more crisp and clean. Since the background is so dark, it might be hard to see the original crop marks. So let's change this quickly before moving on. Select the crop marks layer and right click to go to blending options. Add a white color overlay to help the crop marks appear more visible. For this flyer, it's essential that we get into the habit of using the move tool in collaboration with the up, down, and right and left arrow keys. Select the Move tool and use the left arrow key to move the pattern layer over to the left. Keep hitting the left arrow key until you're happy with the position. Let's continue by adding a new group dedicated to shapes. First, I'll create a border similar to the one in our last design, just a little thicker. Select the Rectangle tool and create a new white rectangle with a stroke of 80 pixels. Switch the Stroke Fill to Black from the Properties panel for a clean black border. During this design, you may have to zoom in and out to get a good idea of how it's coming along. The pattern, for instance, tends to look a little distorted from far away. So just make sure you zoom in every once in a while to double check and see if everything is going well. Now that we have our pattern set, we can move on to the other shapes. Select the ellipse tool and click on the canvas to bring up the dialog box. First, create a black circle with a width and height of 2717 by 2480 pixels. Remove any stroke from the circle and resize it to be much smaller with the free transform tool. This first circle will hold the main title of our flyer while all the other shapes are for the event details. Now select the rectangle tool and create a black rectangle. Remove the white stroke, then reposition and resize the rectangle so that it's underneath the ellipse. Use the rectangle tool again to create a skinny gray rectangle above the previous one. This will hold the official party date. Try not to get too caught up in the arrangement of these shapes or colors just yet. Half the battle is getting everything onto the canvas, so once that happens, then we'll be able to finely tune all the positions. Next, we'll need a new shape for the first line of our invitation. Select the rounded rectangle tool and create a shape at 2554 by 828 pixels. Set the stroke to none before resizing the shape and position it at the top of the flyer. Center it with the move tool. Our design looks a little dark at the moment, so let's adjust the lighting. First, we'll need to change the black shapes to brighter colors for a more charcoal tone. So select each black shape and change the fill to this dark gray color. Do this for each one using the same charcoal hue. Create a new group named Lighting and add a new layer. Drag the group under the Shapes group for a better position. Now paint some light. Set the foreground color to this rich brown hue. Then select the brush tool and use a soft round brush to paint brown light onto the flyer. And softly fill in the top of the flyer with a few sweeping passes. We need to reposition this group again for better organization. Drag the lighting group into the shapes group and place it underneath the rectangle border. Decrease the size of your brush and paint the same color onto the black circle. And curve it around the ellipse. Adjust the intensity at any time using a soft eraser brush with low opacity. 
Finish the light by painting two bright spots on the lower rectangle. Then set the layer blend mode to linear dodge add and lower the opacity to 9%. Toggle the visibility of this layer and it now looks like we've turned the lights on. I think this looks pretty good so far, so we can move on to the text. Create a new group dedicated to the text layers. Since this is for a birthday celebration, select the text tool and start by adding the words you are invited to my at the top in gold. Then make sure the font is set to grow now regular with a size of 25 point. Place it on the rounded rectangle and center it with the move tool and arrow keys. Then right click the layer and go to blending options, adding a linear gradient overlay with the following colors and settings. Create a reflected gold tone inspired by the original Art Deco style. Double click the effects again and add a quick black stroke of one pixel. Continue adding more text. This time, I'll use the Roller Regular font to write the word 25th in gold at a size of 100 point. Now right click the text and go to blending options, adding a gold linear gradient with slightly brighter colors. Out of all of our text, 25th becomes the most ornate. So next, add a black stroke of four pixels to clean it up, then add a bevel and emboss layer style with the following options to make it look more 3D. To improve the word's contrast against the gray circle, create a black drop shadow. Adjust the distance, spread, and size as follows for a clean result. Now write the word birthday using the same font, this time at a size of 60 point. Change the font color to a medium gray value for a nice subtle change. The next font we'll need is a pretty cursive font named Bambi. Use it to write the word celebration and change the color fill back to gold. Let's return to the original font now, Grona, for the remaining text. Write the official date in gold on a new text layer, changing the size to 35 point. Add a quick drop shadow with blending options for a clean effect. Then move on to the other details. Write the name of your venue at a size of 50 point. Then add a gradient overlay using the first gold gradient we started with. Double click the effects again to add a black stroke of one pixel. Now create the text layers for the feature performances, special guest, and the guest name. Use a darker gold and a size of 20 point for the first two. Then adjust the words for John Smith to the original gold color with a size of 40 point. Clean up the name with a black stroke of one pixel. At any time during this course, feel free to fill in the flyer with the text you prefer. It's usually a good idea to say what you can expect to happen at the party. So now we'll write the words music, food, dance, and party at the same font size of 40 point. Add a gradient overlay to this text, setting the color to a gold linear gradient with a slight change of colors. Let's finish the text section with our last line. Include the time and a quick phone number to RSVP. Right click and go to blending options, creating another new gradient overlay, this time with deeper gold tones to soften the edges. Then add a quick black stroke of one pixel. Now we'll add a few lines to separate the text. Select the line tool and create a line across the top with a brown stroke of seven pixels. Then change the stroke options to a smaller dashed line. Hold Ctrl J to duplicate this layer, dragging down the copy underneath the venue name. Continue readjusting these elements with the Move tool and arrow keys for a better fit. Create a smaller line above the event time. Set it to a brown stroke of three pixels with a small dashed effect. The last line we'll create is a combination of shapes underneath the word celebration. Start by typing out a bunch of forward slashes, a total of about 20 of them, in gold at a font size of 15 point. Center the slashes. Then create a new dashed line with the same gold color at a stroke of 20 pixels. Position the dashed line so that it slices the forward slashes for a nice little decoration. We are almost done. Let's add some drop shadows to a few shapes. Create one last new group for the final details. Select the rounded rectangle shape and right click to go to blending options. Add a black drop shadow with the following settings for a much crisper look. Now right click the layer and copy the layer style so you can then paste it onto the gray circle. Create a new layer in the final details group. 
Set the layer blend mode to overlay and use a soft round brush to paint white at the very top and bottom of the flyer. You can continue painting on this layer or set another new layer to overlay to paint a quick spotlight over the word 25th. Adjust the layer opacity as needed. Finalize your flyer with a few adjustment layers to color correct the design. Create a new adjustment layer of color balance. Set the midtones to negative 2, negative 52, negative 40, and the highlights to negative 37, negative 14, and 1. Duplicate this adjustment, changing the midtones to negative 100, negative 27, 70, and the highlights to negative 12, negative 4, and negative 71 for a much cooler result. Here is our final design. Feel free to check it out against different backgrounds to make sure the lighting is right. You can customize it even more by updating the text, adding a gradient map layer adjustment, or just by switching a few colors around for the other details. Organize your file even further by color coding each group. Really great job, everyone. I hope you've enjoyed these lessons. Let's move on to the last video of this course, where we'll go over a final recap of everything we've learned. Hello everyone and welcome back to this course, How to Make a Flyer. My name is Melody Nieves and I've been your instructor. I really hope you've enjoyed learning more about flyer designs in a way that breaks down the process simply. Now that we've finished our flyers, let's go over a final recap of everything we've learned. Professional flyer designs are often intimidating for many new users to Adobe Photoshop. So don't worry because you're not alone. That's why we've tackled two amazing designs using high quality assets from Envato Elements. First, we learn the essentials, tackling the basics of standard printing guidelines, as well as what to expect when you download a Photoshop template with your subscription. Then we moved on to the flyers, creating a fun musical festival inspired design, as well as a vintage Art Deco theme. Though both are very different, I've generally kept the composition relatively similar to help you navigate both designs easily. Remember to take advantage of extraordinary assets like Photoshop Actions, Vector Patterns, and Premium Fonts to do all the hard work for you. Not only do these resources make your life so much easier, but you're also able to speed up your workflow for a much faster turnaround. Continue reviewing these videos, making sure to pause and replay any lesson until it sticks. For more help and amazing tips, feel free to follow me on social media or check out my latest design articles and courses. My name is Melody Nieves, and from all of us here at Envato Touch Plus, thank you for watching and good luck.